It only took like six months, but we finally got the Ancient Gardens tank 3.0, I think, finished, and it's all ready to go. We're about to put some fish in it. You'll see that later in the video, but I'm gonna take you through the entire process from start to finish. So let's once again go back in time and let's start the build. The tank is a four foot aquarium, rimless of course. This is the current serene tank. I think it's about 65 gallons and uh, our creepy doll is gonna watch us while we do this. First thing we need to do amongst my giant mess here is just begin. So we're gonna start with the substrate. And for that right out here, we're gonna use some Monterey beach sand. So I have two things of it. This was the original substrate that was in the tank, but it was really thin. So we're gonna need to add some extra stuff. Of course I forgot the most important part before you put the substrate in is make sure your tank is level, say a prayer. I don't think when we got this tank we moved the feet at all, but it looks like we're pretty close. What do we need to come up on? The left side a little bit. Let's check the front to back. That's kind of what I'm more concerned about. Looks like we're pretty good. Got the tank a little bit more level, guys. Now we need to start playing around with the hardscape. We're jumping right into it. So here's all my trees. Um, I know you can't maybe tell because it's just a pile of these old things. These are from the old scape that was in one of the smaller three foot tanks in the last house. And I think we're gonna use pretty much all of these. They're getting pretty old. We got a lot of branch work that kind of fell off of these, but I think it's gonna be enough. You know, once we get our Monte Carlo on here and growing, I don't think it's gonna make much of a difference. That's what I'm trying to say. So, before we start messing with the placements of these, we need to get some rock in the scape. We're gonna be using Dragonstone for this setup because it's what I've used in the past for similar scapes, and because I think it's a better option than something like Suryu Stone. We don't have to worry about these rocks changing the chemistry of the water, and I think they just look the best with this style of setup. So once I get most of the things put into a place that kind of looks good, now it's time to start building up the rear portion of the scape. So as you can see, we have a lot of space back here. We need to fill this up. We need to create almost like some mountains that we're gonna put our smaller trees on. I'm putting these pieces pretty much randomly in the back just to fill space. There's a few smaller pieces that I need to put in front here. We're gonna eventually have to super glue these to the trees to hold them in place. I wanna make sure that there's one big tree here in the front. You know, the more I work on this scape with the Kessel light up here, the more it's kind of, I'm kind of getting into it. I don't know, at first, you know, we just put it on here so I would have some light, we'd figure out the lighting situation later, but I don't know, I think this might work. I think it's gonna throw enough, and so, I, I, I don't know. We'll just wait and see, I don't know. I might change my mind again in like five minutes. But now that I have the layout pretty much the way that I want it, it's time to super glue them because they will not stay put. We have our handy Gorilla Super Glue gel type, of course, making it a little bit easier. That volume really helps out a lot, especially with these pieces we're trying to attach. We made sure to keep the smaller trees in the back, the bigger ones in the front. That way it looks like we're getting farther away as we move through the scape, giving us that really good illusion of depth. Hopefully we can pull that off here. That is the goal, but yeah, we need to get these things all put in place. I need to do a bunch of other work with the filtration and my pipes here. And yeah, let's just get to it. And yes, super glue is totally aquarium safe. Once it hardens up, you guys are not gonna have any issues. It's one of the best tools for attaching rocks to wood, which is basically what I do for a living. So you're gonna be all good here. The big tree that we want in the front, we have to attach it to a few smaller pieces because it's not sitting directly on big stones like the other trees. A couple hours later and we're all done with the hardscape. Now it's time to get ready to plant. So I'm gonna go ahead and wet everything down. It's gonna be a good start for us here. We're gonna be using a ton of Monte Carlo. So there's a bunch of plants in here. Mostly it's that MC. We have roughly 30 pots. So it's pretty easy. All you have to do is pull these little starts out and then just press them gently into the branches of the trees. I take my time doing this, I go around. Again, these trees that we're using are pretty old. The branch work isn't super elaborate, so it can be kind of tough to get it in there, but if you're dealing with a new tree, it's probably gonna be really, really easy. Now we're down to just two pots left, and I could definitely use about 10 more to really round this thing out, but we're gonna go ahead and move on and start filling up the tank. I wanna get a little bit of water in here, because we're gonna be planting a few more plants in the substrate. So for that, we're gonna be using two different plants, the first being dwarf hair grass, pretty easy to plant, just grab your tweezers, stick them down there, and then the last one is gonna be some S repins. These are two carpeting plants that hopefully will take in this sand and eventually look really nice. 
the more elaborate the fish tank you set up, the likelihood of you having problems increases dramatically, and that's exactly what happened here. Always fun to come down the next morning and see your new tank in a state of disarray, trying to figure out what the heck happened. So we have a couple issues. One, we have a tree that floated up, so we didn't super glue it well enough, and we have a lot of the Monte Carlo. It didn't get seeded very well in the branches of the trees, that's an easy fix though. And then of course we have the crazy cloudiness of the water, which I'm still trying to figure out. I can't decide, you know, we have three choices. It's either the substrate, the rocks, or the wood. What's leaching it? What's going on here? Our substrate was really clean. The rocks were really clean. These pieces of wood have been in a tank before, but they've been dry for a super long time. So I'm not 100% sure, but I think it has something to do with the fact that we put in some relatively, I guess, air quotes, new materials, and we didn't hook up our filter last night. That's because we need to go through and clean this whole thing out. It's been sitting with water in it for I don't even know how many months, so we need to do a total overhaul on it. We're gonna do that today. But this is just how it goes, so we're not dissuaded by this. We're not, uh, you know, freaking out or anything. These are all relatively easy fixes that we're gonna accomplish today, along with getting our filter down here and our CO2 system hooked up because that is gonna be extremely crucial in the success of this new tank. So we just gotta go through the tank here, press the Monte Carlo back on. I'm gonna also drain the water down to start a water change. We need to re-super glue this tree after all. And then when we get to filling it back up is when we add a little bit of our Fritz dechlorinator just in case. And we also wanna add some nitrifying bacteria because this is a new tank after all. We wanna get that cycle started. After I clean the filter out, now we can hook it all up. So I can't remember what Awaza canister filter this is. It is the Biomaster series. And then we also have these fancy new stainless steel lily pipes, which I'm really stoked on. I haven't used them before. I think they're gonna look really good though. And we're not gonna have to clean them as much as the glass stuff or anything that's clear. We have some debris floating around. That's where the skimmer comes in handy, plug this thing in. And that took care of a lot of the floating bits that were still hanging around. Now it's CO2 time. So we're gonna be using Corey's newish regulator and we're gonna be doing that for a couple different reasons. One, because it's like at least $100 cheaper than a similar product that looks just like it and because it has like the best warranty ever. So if you have any issues with it, Corey's gonna replace it for you. You're not gonna have to worry about going back and forth on emails because look, CO2 stuff has issues, like just in general. If you've used it a bunch in the past, you know what I'm talking about. I've been through many a regulator in my day and I have not gotten my money back on the vast majority of them. So I was happy to see he had this product. I'm glad to be testing it out these days. You can expand this thing out to where it has six bubble counters. So you could technically run up to six different aquariums from one tank, which is pretty cool. We're not gonna go through the entire setup on how to do a regulator, but I'm pretty much showing you exactly what you need to do. Something that is important though, is that you run the solenoid on a timer so that you can pair it up with your lights. That way you're not running CO2 at nighttime because that's kind of pointless. Something that I remembered at the last second was that I had some pinnatophyta that I wanted to put into this tank. So I just kind of threw it in the tank. We're gonna let this die off. It's gotta go through its transformative period before it starts looking really nice anyway. Fast forward about a week later and the tank is doing absolutely phenomenal. There's a few important things I really wanna highlight here, but first, we got some plants. So we got some extra Monte Carlo from good old Corey. He sent me a little care package here. We can round out a few of the trees. We gotta to get to these Monte Carlo pots before a friend eats them all up. But I actually haven't gotten plants from Corey in a super long time. Maybe this isn't new and he's done this for forever. It's like in this, uh, it's like in this cool bag that I cannot open one-handed. These five or six pots are gonna help me to finish out the trees, because as you can see, you know, we didn't get everything that we wanted in the initial build, the stuff that I got from the farm. So this is gonna be a huge help. We'll talk about the skimmer and the crazy ghost stories with the light here in a second, but let's get these things planted and let's round this thing out. Putting in all that fresh MC is gonna make the tank a little messy, but luckily we have the new Awaza Crystal Skim Skimmer on here. This is the big one. I did a shorts on it a little while ago. I took the guard and the crown off. That's gonna be perfect for sucking up plants. This thing's pretty powerful, so all of this stuff floating around will be pretty much gone in just a few hours. Some things are gonna get stuck in corners. You will have to fish those out and kinda 
push them around in the right area to get it to work. But this thing has helped out a ton, especially with the surface film that we definitely had on this tank during the first few days of setup. So it really helps make the tank just look a million times better and I think be healthier, increasing the gas exchange and just making the ecosystem uh, more conducive to not having algae, which is something we don't have any of. And we're like two weeks into this thing already. So this thing actively skimming the water paired with the fact that we're, you know, we're putting CO2 into this tank. So our aquarium co-op regulator has been working tremendously. Don't fill your bubble counter with water or it will evaporate. Pumping out about a bubble a second, maybe a little bit faster. I know that doesn't seem like a lot for a big tank like this, but I think it's plenty paired with the fact that we are still throwing in a very minimal amount of light into this thing. And I really think that is the biggest reason for why we haven't had algae thus far. No matter what you do when you first set up a tank, you're gonna have some kind of battle with algae like 98% of the time. We're not totally in a safe zone here. We could get a big algae bloom tomorrow or we could start seeing a little bit of some filamentous stuff growing in here and that's definitely a possibility but I don't think it's gonna happen because this light We've been running this Kessel at a super low power. It's kind of hard to tell probably on camera, but this is not even close to halfway power mode on this thing. And that's in part because this thing is broken. So if I turn it up any higher, and it might even still do it now, it still does even when it's on like no power, it'll flicker. I don't know, you know, I dusted it, I went through, it's just, it's defective. I can't get the automatic, uh, I can't get the app stuff to work because even if it's off and I try and pair it, it'll just reset itself. So. This was a joke using the Kessel light. I wasn't going to do it, and then I kind of changed my mind and was like, eh, that might be kind of cool. It doesn't look terrible, and I'm going for this sort of low lightish environment, even though I'm doing CO2 and using Monte Carlo, I know. But now that it doesn't work, I mean, I don't know, we're gonna have to change it up. So I haven't decided how we're gonna do that or what we're gonna use, but the fact remains, the low light, I think, with this tank has been the main reason for why we don't have any algae. So I'm gonna try and, I'm just gonna roll with it for as long as possible and see if my little test here is true and works. I think now's the time that we put fish in the tank and been going back and forth I'm gonna be kind of a little bit of a fish snob here where we're gonna select fish that work with the scape and don't take away from it. So it did cross my mind like, yeah, we could put like cardinal tetras in here, but the coloration of the cardinal, I don't think is gonna contrast well with what we have here. Hence why I'm gonna be a little bit of a snob and pick fish that kind of, they have some character, they're gonna pop well, but they're not gonna take away from looking at the scape. I know, I know, it's not the most exciting thing in the world, but I think it's all gonna work. So based on what we have, I think the Ember Tetras that we have in here are gonna be perfect for the big tank. I would like to have quite a bit more of them though to really fill things out, but as far as color-wise, I think they're gonna blend with the scape nicely. They're not gonna take away from the Aquascape, kind of like how they work in this tank. And because the water chemistry in this tank is pretty much the same as the one that they're going in, we don't really have to do much. We can just plop them and drop them. There's fish in here, I swear, guys. They're doing the typical thing where they hide as soon as you put them in and they're tiny and we didn't put that many in. I think there was only like 20-ish of the Ember Tetras left in our little grouping. So not ideal for what we want in here. We should probably get at least another 20, um, really bump that up to where we can see the fish. They're also probably getting used to the amount of flow in this tank because they were in an aquarium that didn't have literally any flow. So we'll give them some time to get acquainted with their new home. And I'm sure we're gonna be adding some different fish to this tank pretty soon here. They're all hiding in the back. I just saw one sneaking around. There they are. They're gonna run into the flow of our skimmer. But one of the first signs you see with the Monte Carlo to tell if it's happy or not, is you're gonna notice the root system starting to grow downward. So it's kind of hard to see on this camera. I can't really zoom in too far, but you can see these pieces where the roots are starting to develop and they're growing down. They're looking for some substrate probably, but they don't need it. There might be a little bit of brown algae on a couple of the trees in here. I'm not super worried about it because it's not everywhere. I don't think it's gonna become a problem, but we're keeping our eye on that. The pinnatophyta that we threw in here is of course going to eventually be growing on some of these back rocks. And once we get the environment more nitrogen limited and probably increase the light a little bit, then it'll start to turn red and give me that look that I'm looking for. 
but right now it's still going through the melting process. There might be a good, there's a good little area of it right here. Try and get a focus on that. So the main big leaves fall off and then you're gonna start to get these smaller growths that then will attach to stuff nearby them. So I'll eventually get in here and move them around and kind of lay them on rocks. And then the smaller growths of the new growths will then start to attach to the rocks nearby. We'll probably end up having to dose this tank. I have put a little bit of fertilizer in here already, but I'm not really juicing this thing. I'm again, nervous about the algae. I don't want to throw too many excess nutrients in here, even though we have stuff like these guys on the back of the tank and the Monte Carlo starting to actively grow. Don't want to overdo it because that could throw us into some really bad algae territory. So being cautious of that, but at the same time, know that I need it because I don't have an active substrate down here. So these plants are probably gonna appreciate that. We need to season up this sand and get a lot of nutrients down in that sand, but that's gonna take a long time. This tank's probably gonna take a little while to become a balanced aquarium just because of those factors that I just mentioned. So we're gonna have to stay up on our kind of semi or infrequent water changes on this thing. I just did one yesterday. The tank is looking super clear. So we're moving in the right direction, but again, we're gonna have to be patient to get that kind of final result that we're looking for. We still have a long way to go with this tank as far as the maturity of it. So obviously the first step is to get the Monte Carlo to grow and we encourage that by adding CO2, giving it a decent amount of light, something that we're gonna be tweaking here in the next few days. And then we're not gonna make the same mistake that we've done a couple other times, and that is continuing to allow the CO2 to grow the Monte Carlo like crazy. Because ultimately what happens, if you don't remember, is that this stuff grows, it turns into a just a huge mass of it, they stop looking like trees and the, the tank eventually just kind of reaches its end point. So we're gonna try and not do that this time. We're gonna get the Monte Carlo actively growing. We're gonna get these trees to look really good and then we're gonna pull the CO2 and we're gonna try and keep the tank in what I like to call stasis mode. And by doing that, we're hoping to maintain the environment at that point and then just let this thing sit for as long as possible. And we won't have to do any trimming. We won't have to worry about issues arising. If we can achieve this, which I think we can, then that's gonna allow this scape to be here for a lot longer than if we just were hitting the gas the whole time with the CO2 and the highlight. So I don't know, you'll have to stay tuned for kind of a long time to figure out if we could pull that off. You know, it's gonna be several months, but I think we're gonna be able to do it. And I think it's just gonna be awesome. Like, this is a really cool style of aquascape that I obviously like to do because I've done it several times but it's just fun. It's, it's a little expensive. I'm not gonna lie. It's, it's not the most practical thing in the world, but it just looks awesome. So to me, it's worth it every time. So with that, I think we're gonna wrap up the video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something new. And if you were interested in trying this style of aquarium, you should definitely go for it because it's a pretty rewarding process. Once you get everything all set up and you get the plants growing, it's, it's definitely worth it. So don't, don't be scared of all this stuff. It's just part of the fun. Thank you once again for watching, guys, and we'll see you in the next one.